I'm Dr. Sean Williams from the University of Sheffield's School of Languages and Cultures. I'm working with sociologists Professor Gieselinde Kopers from the University of Amsterdam and Professor Victoria Robinson from the University of York to launch a new project on aesthetic labour. Our international interdisciplinary conference draws on expertise from Sheffield and beyond. Aesthetic labour refers to employees being expected, implicitly or explicitly, to adjust their looks in order to adhere to a particular professional image. Think of the way cabin crews serve you on board an aeroplane heavily made up, or our surprise of a tattoo artist isn't inked. More broadly, investigating aesthetic labour asks how beauty at work, or beauty as work, is practised, performed, professionalised. In this image, the hairdresser is self-consciously presenting himself as a labourer, yet with his own sense of style. What are the culturally specific social contexts behind this self-presentation? Because the image stages hairdressing as craftsmanship, my question is not necessarily about investigating this individual worker and his relationship to this particular work environment. It speaks to sociology, to be sure, but it is a wider cultural historical question of representation. I'm presenting the film My Beautiful Laundrette. I'm going to analyse performances of masculinity, especially within the space of the laundrette which as a place of washing offers a different frame for masculinity which is not necessarily associated with um, these kinds of aesthetic labour. Today I spoke briefly about a spin-off from a research project around uh, sport in Latin America and specifically women, beauty and their representation in football. My research today was looking at shoes as a material object, but how they inform identity over time, um, using sociological perspectives such as the concept of aesthetic labour and how people at work have to dress in a particular way. I came to this conference to talk about beauty standards, so the way that people judge other people's beauty, both of faces and of bodies. So what struck me in this conference is that Everybody, so from architecture to dentistry to cultural studies and literary studies, really seem to be grappling with the same question, which is that everybody expects us to find something real and underlying and universal about beauty. We worked in five European countries, uh, and the UK was one of them. It's interesting for, for me and for scholars to work internationally because it leads to very different sorts of perspectives. It's always helpful to gather new perspective and to get acquainted with different methods of working and I think um, having studied in different countries in Europe it's, it's quite helpful to develop those skills. So aesthetic labour can be discussed from a range of international and interdisciplinary perspectives. It's also relevant to our own lives. The recent case of Nicola Thorpe was widely reported in the media and has led to a parliamentary inquiry. She says she lost her temping job as a corporate receptionist because she refused to wear high heels. Our reaction is not necessarily about the rights and wrongs of cases such as this, though of course we have our opinions. Primarily, we contextualise work practices and expectations related to professional beauty. We're interested in aesthetic labour in specific workplaces or industries, but beyond those contexts too in particular periods of time, countries or communities, be it tattoo artistry in Mexico or ex-Navy men from Hull. Our conference is just the start of this conversation. To take part in our project and expand our collaboration with your expertise, take a look at our webpage or tweet me at Wickish History.